tax collector and pay it to the federal government. So that would be the general idea. Now note, we could total this up in total down below, summing this up, summing the gross pays, copying that across, control C, holding shift, right arrow, control V, this would be our total. Now when we enter the journal entry, we could think of it as a check by check, or we could, for example, say, I'm gonna use this as my support register and then simply enter the total as if kind of like they were one employee as a journal entry into my account. There's pros and cons of other, either way to do it. If you were to run this, for example, in a QuickBooks system or an accounting system and use payroll within the system, it would give you each individual employee at which you would need in order to basically verify each employee and make all the supporting records and so on and so forth and track each person's uh, withholdings on a year-to-date basis and on a check-by-check -check basis and so on and so forth, provide the payroll stubs and all that kind of stuff. If you had a third-party provider do the payroll and then you were taking their payroll and putting it into your accounting system, they might provide you something like this worksheet and they might do the backup work like that. And then you might just enter it in with one journal entry, which would be a lot easier, although you do also still have to be careful of the complication that this will be touching the cash account. So if you put this in as a journal entry with one lump sum into the cash account, you gotta, you're gonna have to, when you reconcile, see the fact that it's gonna hit the bank account and these two numbers, which might not be too bad to kind of figure out. So, so you can kind of work it in that way as well. And oftentimes if you were to do that, you might then have a separate payroll account that you put money into just for payroll and then take the money out so that you can reconcile you know, easily and be able to verify it and check if there's any kind of problems to it. So you also might have another check figure at, at the end here. You might say you can also do it this way. This equals this number minus the sum of these. So you can calculate that last number two different ways. And then we're gonna have the employer taxes. So we're gonna have to pay our taxes over and above the employee taxes. So we got now employer tax. And that's, we're not going to pay FIT, we don't have to match that, but we do have to match Social Security. And we've got to match the Medicare. We also have, might have on the federal side of things, federal unemployment tax. But I'm not going to add that because there's a small cap, it's usually a lot smaller of a, of a dollar amount, and the cap gets a little confusing on it as well, so we're going to keep it at these core payroll taxes. So let's go ahead and, and then let's put a total over here too. Total, we'll total this up. And then I'm going to make this outer column. We're going to make this black, white. Let's center it. I'm going to make this whole thing black and white as well. And then we've got our two employees, which will be Adam and it will be Erica. We're going to bring down the, the dollar amounts and we're just basically going to match Social Security and Medicare. So Social Security will match. Social Security will match. And then Medicare we will match. And Medicare, you could think of it as basically matching kind of like a 401k. That's kind of how they, they thought about it when they put the law into place and whatnot. So now we have to pay these amounts over and above the actual gross pay, basically paying kind of an income tax on the employee's income, even though their income is income that we paid them and we're paying like taxes on the income that we, you know, you, anyways, we're then going to sum it up over here, sum it up over here and sum it up over here and then we can then take the total total summing this up in tote towel copying this and pasting it across and then we can also double check this way summing up this way too and we should get that to that same to that same 474 as well so what's going to happen then when we when we record this into the system, we're going to say we could look at it in total. The employees in total earned six thousand nine eighty three, but they're only going to get the five thousand four twenty nine. That's how much is going to decrease the checking account, but it's going to be in two separate checks. The difference is going to increase the payroll liabilities, FIT, Social Security and Medicare. Then we're going to have to pay over and above on top of that the employer taxes, which we have generated or incurred at the point in time that payroll happened, 
but which we have not yet paid, so cash isn't affected at the point payroll is processed for these taxes. Instead, they're going to increase the payroll liability and record the expense as payroll expense. Okay, so that means the total payroll liability we can put down here. This is going to be payroll liability. And we're going to say that we're going to have FIT. We're going to have Social Security. Social Security. We're going to have Medicare. We're going to have the total. And let's do some formatting on the black and white here. Black, white. And let's center. And let's format these as black and white. And then we'll just call this payroll. Payroll liability okay so the fit is just going to be the employee the employee tax it's not our tax the social security is the employee tax plus the employer side the medicare is the employee plus the employer side summing these up is going to be this way you can't you can't double check by adding these two because you have that fit which is you know you have a difference between the two okay so now one more time, one more recap on this. What's going to happen in total? We can say our employees are going to earn 6,983, which is going to be a debit to the expense account, payroll expense that they have earned, but they're only going to get 54592, five, meaning the checking account is going to be decreased with two actual different transactions that will hit the bank statement of 5492 the uh, decrease to the checking account the difference is what we had to take from the employees or never give them even though in theory they earned it so we can pay it on their behalf to the government so that's going to increase a liability account payroll liability in addition to that by us processing payroll we have to incur taxes on ourselves as the employer basically because we have employees so we got to pay over and above what we pay the employees, basically paying tax on their earnings that we paid them, in essence. And so that we're not going to pay yet at the point in time we process the payroll. We are instead going to be recording the expense of the tax expense and increase the liability that we're going to pay in the future. Therefore, the liability that we have piled up that we're going to have to pay to the government from this transaction is FIT, which is just the employee side that we took from the employee, or in other words, withheld from them. The Social Security, which has an employee and an employer portion, so half of what we are paying, in essence, came from the employee and half of it is our portion. Same with the Medicare. So this is what we would expect the total liability to be that we will have to pay. Let's go ahead and delete this last column and do some formatting. Right click and delete this column. Let's make this blue and bold. I'm going to select all this stuff and hold down control and hit that one. Making this blue. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors. And that blue right there. And bordered it. Blue and border. Blue and border. Border blue. Border blue. So blue and the border. And then this one also borders and blue. Okay, so then next time we're going to use this information to make the journal entry that we just talked about this time.